this strong, Kojak, where he's kind of everywhere, getting deflections, passes, rebounds, and obviously able to push the ball the length of the floor. Well, as you said yourself, like I mean, he, he does it both ends. He's um, he finishes very well. Look, he's got his hands on another steal now, but he sees a pass as well, full court pass there, and his teammates are, are reaping the rewards of what he's doing. You know, so yeah, that's a really strong finish inside there by Ryan Malign. We are just fixing the scoreboard now, so the correct score is 21 points to two. Another steal there from Cronin. Nice spin move, and unlucky there, he's gonna lose possession back to Bally Shannon. Apologies, we will get the scoreboard working now in a second as you mentioned it's 21 points to two two minutes and seven seconds we will update the scoreboard in a moment we're just having issues with our computer not easy to multitask either Connor eh? no <laughs> I'm a like to focus on one thing <laughs> and talking tends to be it <laughs> Heard you were talking last night, 17 points in the first quarter against a was it? Uh, our old rivals, Temple Oak. Oh, Temple Oak, sorry. Yeah, but uh, a grazed knee kind of then took me out of my rhythm. I spent a lot of the rest of the game sitting on the bench. Job was done at that stage, sure. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. got to mind those knees. Mm -hmm. So, as you said, 153 to go, 21 points. A tough shot there by Valley Shannon. Rory Cronin picks up the ball. Two men picking him up full court. Three men picking him up full court. But he gets through the pressure. Dribbles through by all three. Now it's ultimately turned off. Turned over. So 135 to go. Yeah, you, like Valley Shannon, they're going to put a lot more pressure on him now. I'd say you could see two, three people going to him nearly all the time and force the other players to do the scoring for uh, Castle Troy College. Their, their box and one defense has really worked very well so far, like limiting uh, Bally Shannon to just two points. Yeah, getting deflections on it, everything here so far. Oh, yeah. Tough pass inside, and here comes Cronin again. Unselfish, extra pass. Finds his teammate on the break, and Jonah O'Rourke gets his another basket. And this is the worry for Bally Shannon uh, Kojak is that they're turning the ball over, and it's allowing Castle Troy to get out into transition. Yeah, like they're, they're settling for stuff. They're settling for outside shots, and you know it's a quick rebound. It's down the floor, then straight away for Castle Troy, and. You know, not only is Cronin a good scorer, but he, he sees his teammates as well. You know, and, and that's going to be hard for them to manage, I think. I don't think they have anybody his size to be able to guard him, which is the main problem. So, Cronin goes to the line. Second free throw, no good. So it remains 23-2, fast break here for Bally Shannon all the way to the basket, can't finish, and there he is again, picking up a rebound. Oh, nice wow. Nice take inside, but can't finish. Nice footwork, just couldn't finish. So 35 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Unfortunately, a turnover there for Ryan Keenigan. So, Castle Troy College will get the ball back. 33 seconds to go. Currently leading by 21 points. It's been the Rory Cronin show so far, but he's been ably helped by his teammates as well. Yeah, he, he just seems to see the right passes. We see a three coming up. No good and a good rebound for Bally Shannon. They take the ball up through Dara Dolan. 
Oh. That's a, yeah, lovely take there by Dara Dolan. Goes coast to coast it's and gets the fourth point of the game for um, Bally Shannon. It's the first time he's really got free. They've done a really good job on him in that box and one, you know, just taking him out of his rhythm and not allowing him to see the ball at all. Yeah, nice block there right by Ryan Keenan as well underneath the basket. 7.6 seconds to go here, so ideally for a clash to Column Kill, a stop here would end the quarter on a positive note. But here comes a three, no good. Cronin underneath the basket, and he's just too big, gets the offensive rebound and finishes with the score. So at the end of the first quarter here in the National Basketball Arena, it's Castle Troy College leading Bally our <laughs> Column Kills 25 points to four. We'll be back in just a moment. So welcome back. Hopefully all the technical difficulties are dealt with as we are here for the under 16 B boys All-Ireland Schools Cup final between Clash of Column Kill and Bally Shannon who trail Castle Troy College Limerick. It's 26 points to four. Rory Cronin with 16 points in that first quarter. Kojak, as a coach, what, uh, what do you think John Kennedy and Michael Doherty on the sideline could be trying to uh, emphasize their players to try and help them get into this game? Firstly, on, on defensive side of the floor, they've got to get the ball out of Cronin's hands. And, you know, he, he's just been a major impact. But, you know, the other end of the floor on their offense, they just don't get to the basket enough. They don't make that defense, you know, just clog up a little bit so they can, they can get the free outside shot as Cronin pulls up for three. Um... Like, they've definitely got to get to the basket a lot more, try and make easier shots, and, and that's going to be huge for them to try and get back into this game, I think. Yeah, nice finish inside there. Ben Horgan initially got the offensive rebound to give his team a second chance opportunity, and then it was finished well by Daniel Shahab. But there's a nice finish inside for Clash to Column Kill. And that's more of what you're, you're just emphasizing there, the good work by uh, Drew Heatley Ryan as he drove to the basket. Yeah, here's another steal and they're all of a sudden they're, they're starting to light up. They gotta finish those though. Good job, Dolan. Yeah, good follow there by Dara Dolan. The commentators curse on the fast break layup. There you go. But overcome by following up and this is better so far to start this second quarter. Tough move inside and there's not a huge amount that clash to Column Kill can do about that. When you have a player capable of scoring like that, Kojak, it's it's very difficult to be able to, to stop. Yeah, because he's not just doing it one way. Like he's shown him so many different looks on his offense and he's he's making big baskets. But when they come to him, then he's able to pass the ball as well. He sees the four very well. So it's gonna be tough to try and stop him, I think. Nice around the back move there. Pull up three. No good. I think the crowd gave him a little ooh for the around the back, so he felt he had to pull up. But that's the more direct way as Rory Cronin takes his total on the day to 20 points already. 20 of the first 32. He's been phenomenal so far and he's out running again looking for another layup here. In contact but no call. Nice take inside. No joy and the second layup doesn't work either. And Kojak, when you're trailing big in these games, they're the sort of plays that you really need to work for you. It's like when you're on a fast break, being able to, to finish. Yeah, like if you work hard enough on D to get like this, get a steal, and you get out on the fast break, you got to make it, you know, reward yourself. Get to the, 
get to the basket, make your layups, you know, make sure you, you get your team back in the game. I mean, if, you, if you're working that hard on D, you got to reward yourself. We have a sub on the floor here as Ben Horgan comes out of the game. And Ryan Milan back into the game. Nice take there. And that's a lovely finish by Kieran Coulter. And just to re-emphasize again, uh, Kojak, it, it's certainly not a one-man show on that uh, Castle Troy uh, team. There, there's a lot of talent out there. Absolutely not. You know, I mean, even though uh, Cronin has got 20 out of 34, the, the others are stepping up. They're making layups when they're in the right position. You know, he's finding them in good positions to make it easy for them. But... You know, number 11, straight down the middle of the last time. Good layup there, this time from Shabal, I think it is. Uh, Ryan Milan. Milan, sorry. Yeah, Ryan Milan. The assist by Cronin on the break. Score now 36 points to 8, 440 to go in this the second quarter. Corner three, no good. And Castle Troy are going to have the ball back. Cronin goes by two, goes by three. Finds Milan underneath the basket and they're going to head to the free throw line. I don't think I've ever seen, well, not in a long time, a kid who's been this dominant in the game, you know, where he's he brings all his teammates into the game but scores a lot himself as well. Yeah, he certainly is a very impressive player. Has a mix of a bit of everything. Can see the floor very well and has size. Again, at under 16 level, that's very difficult to limit. The last kid I saw under 16 night was good. a guy called Stephen McGurk, who's kind of a bit like that, you know. He could, back in his day, was was definitely that kind of player. It's a fair while ago now at this stage. Did you play against him, Connor? Uh, no, <laughs> he's even that bit older than me. I grew up watching him. A great talent for St. Vincent's. Yeah, fantastic player. In a great era for St. Vincent's at that stage. So a second free throw, there was a line break. So if the rebounders go inside the key before the ball hits the basket, you get another opportunity. And Ryan Milan doesn't need any more goes. He knocks it down. So 37 points to eight, four minutes to go. And a good stop there by Castle Troy. That zone is causing all sorts of problems for Clash to Column Kill. The size at the top makes them try and avoid Cronin as much as possible, but there's other size inside as well to make it difficult. Yeah, another great take there again from Kieran Coulter. Yeah. It, it's just that like, the scene, their game plan seems to have been just to take uh, Dara Dolan out of the game, and they've done a fantastic job of that. Like he scored two points in the first 12 and a half minutes. And he's only touched the ball maybe about four times, I'd say. Yeah, it's it's difficult when you when you have size in a box and one, as well as having someone willing to face guard like they are doing. Jonah O'Rourke doing the thankless job of just facing Dolan. So we're going to have a timeout here for Clash to Column Kill as they try and address the situation. We'll be back in just a moment.
So welcome back. 3.08 to go here in the second quarter of the under 16B All Ireland Schools Cup final. Clash to Column Kill from Bally Shannon trailing Castletroy College from Limerick 39 points to 8. We have a zone defence here from Bally Shannon trying to trap underneath the basket. That's good defence. Almost forced a turnover. And a foul call though. And that can be the difficulty, isn't it, Kojak, when you're trying to be aggressive defensively, get back into the game, you know you probably need steals and get some runouts that it can often lead to, to fouls. Yeah, and like uh, as well as that, like they've been in their zone since definitely the start of this quarter, and, and Cronin has just killed it by going inside against it. Now he's coming to the three-point line. But like it, it's kind of a fine line, isn't it? You know, I mean, they're 30 points down, they want to get the ball. What do you do? Do you switch it up and go, man? Who's going to guard Cronin yeah, then? They, they don't seem, they wouldn't have the size there. And it's not even Cronin Milan has size. Yeah, absolutely. No, it's certainly Leandro Ruiz has a lot of options available to him as Cronin heads back to the line. Misses the first free throw and I think he's currently on 20. 21. You don't, you don't tend to see someone have this many points in an underage game without hitting any trees though as well uh, Kojak you tend to see obviously the likes of CJ Fulton has had big scoring games here but a lot of the times it tends to be a few outside shots yeah like in CJ's case I suppose a couple of years ago those 15 threes were unbelievable this kid has gone to the basket more than he shot the ball and it's opening it up for his teammates when he does that like when he drives he, he sees the kick and his teammates are getting wide open looks off it. And then he attacks the offensive boards as well yeah. and gets rebounds. I guess the probably the best example, oh, that's a good take, just doesn't fall. The closest person I can think of is probably Paul Kelly from Moy Cullen. Has been here over recent years with Uchterard, and he's done a remarkable job. He's a little bit smaller, but as a point guard, plays in a similar way. Aggressive, able to get to the basket, and he also rebounds on the defensive end, so... That's probably the closest I can think of, and that's a, a big compliment. It sure is. Like he, he's, he might be a little bit smaller in, in height, but he's definitely, you know, Paul's a big boy. He's uh, got a big body on him. He's going to get a rest now, young Cronin. Yeah, Joan O'Rourke checks into the game for Cronin. He's done some good work here. Half of the cast Troy points, 21 of the 42, 139 to go here in the first half. And this is really now, obviously, this last minute and a half before halftime, this is where Clash to Column Kill need to make some sort of inroads with Cronin on the bench. Yeah, but again, like settling for the outside shot there, you know, instead of attacking the zone. A couple of baskets get themselves a bit of confidence. Ooh. Maybe got away with a travel, but the basketball gods said he wouldn't make the layup. And it just won't go in. And Project, we've all been on the end of these sort of games at times where it just doesn't seem like anything's going to go your way. Yeah, uh, I was on the end of one at the weekend. Uh, we played uh, Father Matthews in the Super League in the women's, and we allowed him to score 39 points in the first quarter. And when you do that, it's a long way back, you know. We, even though we scored 76 points, you know, we're, we're, we're allowing them to score 104, which isn't good, you know. But that's the thing, just keep plugging away and uh, scores will start coming for you and just hope that the other team can kind of be disrupted and go cold a little bit. But there's a nice steal. I suppose the most famous game for that counter, I suppose, a couple of years ago with Tangan, 26 points down against St. Unions in the last quarter and came back to win it. I don't see that happening today, but like it can happen, you know what I mean? Yeah. So we've got 10 seconds to go, final offense of the first half. Ball here with Daniel Shahab finds Milan. Nice take inside and lovely finish. Lovely left hand finish. Little flex to the bench. So that closes out the first half. It's 44 points to eight. Castle Troy College and Limerick lead. Clash of Column Kill from Bally Shannon. We'll be back after halftime.
Welcome back to the second half of this under 16B All Ireland Schools Cup final. Castroy College leading 44 points to 8 against Clash to Column Kill, Bally Shannon. Leading scorers in that first half for Castle Troy College. We had Rory Cronin with 21, Kieran Coulter with 9, Ryan Mullan with 9, and Jonah O'Rourke with 3. Mullan adding two more there. And for Clash to Column Kill, Dara Dolan with 4, and Drew Heatley, Ryan, and Sam McGreal with 2 apiece. Kojak, obviously, it's a big deficit at the moment. What sort of message could uh, Clash to Column Kill be kind of giving? At halftime, there, um, it's going to be very difficult. Like as coaches, I suppose he's got to stay positive. What a move from Cronin! Uh, he's got to stay positive with his team. They, you know, they've got to stay going right at the end of the game. I've no doubt they will. It's going to be very tough on them. Like they're looking at a 40, 50 point deficit. You know, in, in probably the end of this quarter. So. You know, we, we'll see what they're what they're made of, as I suppose, as, as the fellow says. Yeah, they they've obviously had some good wins on the way to getting here. They beat uh, St. Nahi's by 18 points, 47-29 in the in the semi final with Dara Dola top scoring with 22 on that day with Drew Heatley Ryan adding in 14. So that was a, obviously a very good win. They also beat St. Mary's Belfast in the earlier rounds. So they're not they haven't become a bad team or anything overnight this isn't a bad team it's just they've come up against a school in Castle Troy College that have been very strong throughout the rounds I was just looking at some of the scoring for Rory Cronin in the rounds and it's 27 in his first game he had a quiet day 39 second day 49 the next and 40 in the semi-final so he's well on his way with 25 points today so prolific scorer yeah, like at this level, he he's a, a, a real standout. And then, of course, you know, some excellent coaching from the sideline as well. I'm sure these kids love playing for Leandro. Overall, there's really the, a number of European coaches have come into Ireland over the last kind of decade in particular, and they've added a huge amount to Irish basketball, both at senior and underage level over the last few years. Yeah, like you know most of that. Like you have um, Giannis out there, like he's a phenomenal coach. Another uh, really good coach down in uh, in Sligo as well, um, you know, and, and it's great because we're now getting the benefit of seeing different different styles of play and different different ways of playing the game. You know, and it's only going to help us. Dara Dolan does a good job getting to the line there. He's going to get two shots. Yeah, certainly Irish basketball is progressing at a faster rate than it has at any stage before. I think. Ideas are coming to Ireland a lot faster than they ever would have, both because of the internet, but also because of some of the coaches that are coming in. Yeah, definitely. And like even the the players that are now, the, the standard of players got better, the Americans coming in and stuff like that. Like back in the day, they were phenomenal. I mean, oh, what a finish. Yeah, nice <laughs> strong finish there by Cronin. And that's, when, you, when you're talking about very good players and really elite players at this sort of age group, that's the sort of thing that the truly elite are able to do. They're able to finish through contact. Yeah, and he's done that a lot in this game. He's, he's taken contact, he's gone to the basket, but he's, he's got nice soft hands and he finishes nearly every time. He, uh, I actually coached against him earlier in the season with my under-18s in the National Cup. He was playing up two age groups and he hit a couple of shots early in that game, some threes. They let us know all about it as well. How did that one finish? Uh, we don't need to get there. We had a very good team who unfortunately lost in the semi-final, but there's a nice pass, and Ryan Milan again finishes and takes his total to 13 now for the day. He's another impressive player, and he's got excellent footwork, able to finish left and right. Tough shot inside, gets partially blocked. Close out by Cronin in a foul. So 4.48 to go in the third quarter here as we have subs for Bally Shannon as Dolan checks out of the game and Shane Delahunty checks into the game. They're sticking with the, the box in one. Nice. Oh, nice finish. Finished by Crone in there. And it's really the fact that Mullane is there at the back of the zone. He has that size that allows Cronin to kind of roam a little bit at the top of the zone and really leak out and get some easy baskets. 
Yeah, like he gets a lot of deflections himself because he big long arms and he's, you know, he, he he's he's very quick then once he gets the ball in his hands to get into the middle of the floor and get into the basket. Obviously, this will be part of the progression for Castle Troy to head up to A level. From the looks of it, they'll certainly be able to compete at that level as we have a group substitution. As Niall Burns, Ben Horgan, and Darrow Sullivan check into the game as Daniel Shahab and Ryan Mullane and Kieran Coulter check out of the game. So that's two of the top three scorers so far in the game have checked out. Just gone straight up to a tree zone now, but it looks of things are. Nice move inside, just can't finish. Good contest inside there by Ben Horrigan. Great shot. And that's <laughs> nice basketball there by Castle Troy. The crowd getting into it, they're enjoying it. Here as the score is now, sorry, we've gone a little bit rogue with the scoreboard it's 58 points to 9 a great finish there from I think it was number 12 it's Semi Campbell Cronin kicks it to the corner good defense there by Clash Kong Hill Cronin gets the ball out top again no look pass inside finds Horgan he can't shoot Extra pass, finds their big man. He tries to make the extra pass. Going to be a shot clock violation. No, they just get it up in time. No, they don't. They do. Cronin misses the layup, but is there to get his own rebound. Just padding his stats now as well, yeah. <laughs> So 60 points to 11. That is his 30th point of the game. I don't know how many rebounds you'd add to that. A significant number anyway. And definitely about seven or eight assists as well, maybe more. Put up three. Wow. Why, why not? So that takes his total to 33 out of the 63 points that they have so far. To be fair to Kadasha Callum Kill, they're, they're, they keep going. You know, they're, they're not stopping. They, you could get very downhearted very quickly, but they've they stay going in this game, which is a credit to them. Yeah, so as Jono Roar comes out of the game and on the other end, Dara Dolan comes into the game. So for the first time today, we'll see Andrew Lowe for Castle Troy. As the Castle Troy fans sing, I believe that we will win, as <laughs> I'm pretty sure he just pointed up to the camera, which is... Fair play to him, <laughs> why not? That's exactly the sort of reaction I remember when they were hitting those threes in Odin's. So was he pointing at the camera or you, Connor? He certainly <laughs> wasn't pointing at me. <laughs> I don't think I've been trash talking commentary. <laughs> Here so he goes. It's always a first. So 66 points to 11, nice take by Dolan. Good work there, really aggressive, gets the line, rewarded with a trip to the free throw line for two shots. Yeah, you can see that that's probably what he's capable of. They did a really good job of him in the first two quarters of not letting him see the ball. And anytime he has got the ball, he's done something positive with it. Nice form on the shot as well, just falls short. And he knocks down the second one. Takes Clash of Column Kills total to 12. Crony looking side to side. Nice extra pass. Another three here. No, it's going to be right. No look to the camera after that one. <laughs> A nice offensive rebound and he takes it back outside but Dolan does a good job again the deflection as we have another sub here for Bally Shannon number four checking into the game is James P. Gallagher and he comes in for number 12 Simon Campbell or Shamey Campbell even and 
it's going to be a trip to the free throw line for Castle Troy. Big carry derby up next, Connor. Yeah, it should be a fantastic game. Castle Island against uh, Mount Hawk. There's a fantastic semi final last year with Mount Hawk in Tralee sold out. Oh, I remember that. That was on a stream. Yeah. The Stardew yeah. commentary on that, yeah. It's indeed. And Castle Island, obviously, it's great to see them there. It's a big area of basketball in the country. Their blitz was 50 years old this yeah. year. It's one of the big things every Christmas time in Ireland. And it's actually, it's one of the, I really like playing, uh, that kind of facility that they play in. It's one of the few places in Ireland they actually have a tiered seating behind the baskets as well as to the side. Yeah. Fantastic arena down there, is right. So a three-pointer for Dolan in the corner. And there you go. Yeah, lovely shot there by Dolan. Gives the crowd something to cheer for here. 20 seconds to go in the third quarter here. The score is now 66-15. Cronin tries to settle down the team as much as he needs to. He's looking for that last shot, I yeah, think. Yeah, he kicks it out to the corner. Number five with the jump shot, no good. Rebound there, and unless we have a last second shot, it's going to be the time expires. So at the end of three quarters, Castle Troy College in command here. We'll be back after the quarter break. So welcome back for the fourth quarter here. A large lead for Castle Troy. As Leandro is still using up the full minute as he coaches up the team. So Clash to Colvin Kill started to do a little bit better there towards the end of the third quarter. Starting having a little bit more joy. Uh, Kojak, it's a case of just keep plugging away here in the fourth quarter, trying to get some baskets kind of add to the memories, some positive memories for, for today. Yeah, like uh, we've kind of had this all year with my women, is give yourself goals. You know, get, have your own team goals. Don't worry about what they do. You know, go do your own thing and see if you can, uh, you know, have some fun in the last quarter. Young Dolan has definitely come into the game since the box of one is gone. Yeah, and Cronin sits on the bench on the other side. So a nice steal to start this fourth quarter. And that's a nice basket by Shane Delahunty. Nice fast break layup, and the crowd appreciate that one. And Kojak, just obviously there's a, a big crowd down from Colossian and Column Kill, a long journey down from Bally Shannon, and it just speaks to the support that the school obviously are giving them that uh, they're supporting basketball in the school and sending people down to, to cheer on the team, which is a great thing. Yeah, it's like it's gotten so much better up around. Bally Shannon up in the, you know, Donegal, all that area, Letter Kenny, uh, some great clubs up there. And, uh, you know, some really great development work been done up there with Niall and, and his crew up there, you know. Yeah, nice shot there by Dolan. In the corner. It's, and it's very hard to give Niall a compliment, though, isn't it? I won't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> But it's uh, one thing that struck me certainly this week is 
the variety of areas that we're, we're seeing. Sometimes with these, uh, uh, that's a, a lovely finish inside by number six, Ryan Keenigan. But sometimes with the school's final, you can kind of see the old reliables always here. But this year, you've kind of seen a mix. Donegal has had three teams in finals this week. Good and finish. A, a nice finish inside by Dolan again. So it's now 66 points to 23. But we've seen teams from Clare. We've seen uh, Malahide kind of in Dublin, wh who win the under 16A boys yesterday. And another fast break layup here. And a good job there as a finish by Shane Delahunty. And you're seeing more now of what uh, Clash of Column Kill were capable of in the earlier rounds of this uh, of this tournament so far, Kojak. Yeah, like they, since uh, Cronin has gone to the bench and maybe a couple of other of his teammates, uh, Bally Shannon, they're definitely getting out. They're running the ball, they're making layups. You know, they're, they're doing the right things. This kid has been super. Nice step through, just doesn't fall, but with good footwork. Just couldn't finish it, but it could be a steal. Yeah, it's great to see, as you said, all those different kind of areas coming through. And like a lot of that is down to the development officers who are supposed to do their job. And the coach is getting better and better and better. Nice pass inside. Long range three here from Daniel Schaub. Just doesn't fall. Bally Shannon with the rebound. They're going to push the ball down. And young Sharab has, has got a problem with his knee there. I thought him pointed to his coach. Dolan with a lovely floater inside. Kojak, he's shown quite a lot of ability. He's obviously not a very physical guard yet, but he's he's shown skill and ability. Absolutely, like and obviously like Leandro knew about him coming into the game because from the very first tip they, they went box on one of them to take him out of his out of his comfort zone. And like since they pulled off the box on one, he's done really, really well. Yeah, Gerald Joe Martin just checking in for the first time. Darrow Sullivan on the other side here with the ball. And the ball is stolen by Dolan. And he'll head back to the free throw line. So a good steal there by Dolan. He's got a good bit about him, that kid. You know, he's a, he's, he's a trier. He's a good player. You know, the, looks like there's a bit of toughness there, certainly. Hopefully this is only one step in the journey for Clash to Column. The big challenge, obviously, in parts of the country like Donegal is just being able to keep players beyond kind of schools level and whether Letter Kenny IT, more of them end up going there to, to school, we might have more players being able to play in the National League up there. Yeah. Um like we're starting to see it down down even in Carlo now, like with the likes of old Lachlan and you know, these clubs down around us, Paul and Das Bulldogs, you know, Carlo basketball. Uh, kids are, you know, are now starting to come true and, you know, break into we've got three or four sixteen year olds now practicing with us uh, with our national league team, which is great. Uh, hopefully over the next few years they'll become part of that team, you know. I think the other thing that is gonna happen is as Dublin becomes more and more prohibitive to live in financially for college it's going to be people kind of staying closer yeah. to home which is going to make a big difference uh, that's 100 percent right i mean the the financial cost of, of accommodation in dublin is ridiculous and, uh, dolan with two inside you know you probably get three rooms in carlo for the one room in dublin you know yeah, <laughs> certainly so it's getting to a case a lot of people living at home to do it and there just isn't any accommodation but that's not the worry of any of these lads here today as Dolan gets another steal and another fast break layup and that's going to bring reinforcements off the bench for Castle Troy they've seen enough of the guys struggling to get the ball up the court so he sends back in the big guys of Ryan Milan here on Coulter and uh, obviously Rory Cronin as well so it's a 33 point lead 
Good work there by Colossal and Colum Kale, though. Keep plugging away, and as we said, you're going to have good moments in any of these games, and they've had a really good spell for the last couple of minutes, getting a couple of steals and fast break layups. Yeah, the last four minutes, like, they, they've put up maybe 15, 16 points. Done a, done a really good job, and it shows great character as well. And we're going to have a timeout on the floor, so we'll be back in just a moment. So welcome back, 3.28 to go here in the under-16B All-Ireland Schools Cup Final. Rory Crony tries to force it up there through contact. Looking for a call which he doesn't get, so it'll be end-line ball for Castle Troy. He is currently leading Clash to Column Kill, 34 points to 33. It just speaks to his dominance here today. Yeah, he's, he's been phenomenal. Like, I mean, he's, he's the reason that his team are, are winning by so much. As I said, he brought his teammates into the game as well. Pulls up for three. And he'll head to the free throw line to try and increase his total. Probably should have gone up with his left there. It's nice to be able to nitpick. <laughs> First one, good. See the great Jimmy Diggins sitting down behind the basket there. Yeah, with Mount Hawk. Great servant to Irish basketball, and Cronin finishes inside. A phenomenal gentleman, to be fair. 69 points to 33. Cronin on 37 points today. Going to try and extend that. Ooh. And he's going to head to the free throw line to extend it. So, as we mentioned earlier on, 27 points in the first round, 39 points in the second round, 49 points in the quarterfinal, 40 in the semi final, 37 today. Opportunity to get up to 39 if we can knock these two down. As on the other side, we have. James S. Gallagher checking into the game for I'd Ryan Keenigan. I'd say you're definitely going to see him get the 40 at least today again. So, Yeah. The main opposition to him getting to 40 is probably Leandro Ruiz. Yeah. The big hook. There's 39. I had a teammate before who played for his father in high school in America. In Canada, actually, and... His father went to the same school and had the scoring record in the school and subbed out his son as his son was just about to beat his scoring record. I did the same to my nephew. Uh -huh, good man. <laughs> no good for Cronin, but he'll head back to the free throw line again. I also did it a couple of years later to a guy called Enda Fitzsimons. Three and a half minutes left in the game. He was two points away from it. We were winning by 40 at the time, so yeah. it was easy to take him out. Just catch his ring there, so he's going to stay on. There you go. That's 38. No, 40. Did I fall asleep there yeah, for a second? Yeah, missed two free throws, last two free throws. Last one. He missed one of two both times, didn't he? Uh, did he not get two for two? No, no, time? he missed the first one. So 39, some challenging maths here. Here we go. Oh. 
He's running out of opportunities. 2.05 to go here. We may have absolutely botched the mats. Who knows? <laughs> Probably my fault. Uh, pass mats myself to be fair. I don't see Coach making any changes from the sideline either, so he might get his, his chance yet. Good press break there. Dolan gets the ball back. Nice step through. A nice finish inside. Really impressed by Dolan today. He's obviously, it's very difficult when you come into a final like this and you're face guarded and there's a lot of size facing you as well. There's two points. So And there's put, his left hand as well. Yeah, right? nice mm -hmm. left hand finish. So puts it beyond question. Takes the mats out of the equation. Oh, Matt out of the equation, good stuff. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Wow. I was born to do this commentary. <laughs> yeah, I've been really impressed with Dolan as well. You know, I mean. I thought you were about to say I've been really impressed with your commentary. Definitely not the maths anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, Dol Dolan's been excellent. And he's, he's started to get some rewards in the second half. And there's a nice finish inside. You know, fair play to Callum Gill. Like, I mean, they, they could have really just sat down and done nothing in this game yeah. but they, they've really worked hard and stayed you know as close as they could to the team they're playing against you know yeah Dolan oh nice inside yeah. out dribble he's going to push it down likely to get to the free throw line doesn't and just can't hit the layup nice pass unfortunately doesn't work out for him and here comes Cronin did well to slow down there yeah. and finish avoid any sort of contact and we're going to have a timeout on the floor we'll be back in just a moment Welcome back. 51 seconds to go here in the National Basketball Arena. We've got more action coming up shortly with the under 19A boys final. Something that Castle Troy will be aiming for in a couple of years' time, undoubtedly. Yeah, it should be, as I say, it should be a cracker game, Castle Island and, uh, and uh, Mount Hawk. I think it was a 10 point game already this year. So it just doesn't fall there for flash from Callum Kill but just to reiterate again obviously today hasn't been their day but a good run and to get to the National Basketball Arena for one of these schools finals is a remarkable achievement and great work by John Kennedy and Michael Doherty in preparing the team and obviously the school for supporting them and sending down so much traveling support it's a testament to the good work that's going on up in Donegal but Today is about Castle Troy College in this game and about this man, Rory Cronin. Kojak, overall, very deserving winners. Hugely impressive uh, display uh, by Castle Troy. And I know we can get very focused on uh, Cronin. He's going to end up with whatever, 45, 46 points. But it's the overall team they've they've shown lots of ability the likes of Kieran Coulter Ryan Milan doing lots of good work and uh, clearly a well coached team yeah definitely a well coached team and like they're, they're starting five maybe six players are, are excellent they all work hard for each other um, you know number seven as well Jonah O'Rourke did a great job on, on young um, Dara Dolan early in the game in the box and he's back on him again now um, and took him Totally out of his comfort zone has Cronin. Gets another layup. Yeah. So. And that will be the end of the under 16B All Ireland Schools final. Castle Troy College from Limerick have defeated 
Kolosh to Colum Kill from Bally Shannon on a scoreline of 79 points to 37. Congratulations to Castle Troy College and everyone involved with the school basketball down there. A remarkable performance for the school. We're going to have the medal presentation and MVP presentation. We're going to lead out by the runners up. Clash to Column Kill, Bally Shannon. I will just call out the names. It won't be in the same order that they're called out down below, but they're led out by Dara Dolan, number eight, who had a fantastic game. Ryan Keenigan, Shamie Campbell, Sam McGreal, Adam Burr, Shane Delahunty, Gerald Joe Martin, Kim McKenna, Jay Gallagher, Emilio Gomez Perez, Drew Heatley Ryan, James P. Gallagher, and James S. Gallagher. And they were coached by John Kennedy and Michael Doherty. So, again, obviously, with great wins over St. Nahi's in the semi final and St. Mary's Belfast before that, a well earned place in the final, but just wasn't to be today as they came up against a very strong Castle Troy College. Lots for their coaches to be proud of, though, uh, Kojak. Yeah, I was very impressed with the way they stayed going right to the very end of the game. Uh, not easy in those circumstances, but, you know, the, the kids worked hard. The coaches did a great job of keeping them encouraged. And, uh, you know, they, they'll have their day, I'm sure, as well sometime soon. Yep. So commiserations again to Colossal Column Kill, Bally Shannon. And now the winners from Castle Troy College, who are going to be led up by their captain and Irish under-16 international, Rory Cronin. Number four, Yusuf El Mali. Number five, Darrow Sullivan. Six, Ryan Milan. Seven, Jono O'Rourke. Eight, Daniel Shehab. Nine, we've already called out. Ten is Hassan Kashash. Eleven, Kieran Coulter. Twelve, Kyle Milan. 14, Andrew Lowe, 15, Ben Horgan, and 20, Niall Burns. They're coached by Leandro Ruiz, and the assistant coaches were Edna Vaughan and Trisha Jones. A hugely impressive team, uh, Kojak, uh, as we've mentioned numerous times, a good balance them, well organized, and certainly a, a team for the future. Absolutely, really well coached. You know, a couple of really standout players on the team as well. Uh, as I said earlier, they work hard for each other. They, they do the simple things right. And, uh, yeah, they've got a, a big future ahead of them now as they move up to the, to the next level, you know. So we're going to have one of uh, an MVP presentation. There won't be many prizes for the guests of who the MVP of today's game. Number nine, Rory Cronin picking up MVP honours. I'm going to say it's 45 points. It's somewhere around there. Yeah. So congratulations to Rory. Fantastic performance. Hopefully one that we'll see performing at an elite level this summer for the Irish Under-16 international team at the European Championships. But the trophy is now presented to Castle Troy. So congratulations to Castle Troy College, Under-16B All-Ireland Schools Champions. We'll leave you there. And don't forget there's basketball all the rest of today and tomorrow. And then the Hula Hoops Championships this weekend.